Hello and welcome back to Insight. Now we're going to go along to the live theatre in just a moment and speak to Stephen Tompkinson and Jessica Johnson all about their roles in educating Rita. They're currently using the theatre while it's closed to rehearse for it before they take the play down to Cornwall. Let's get that insight. So we're here at the beautiful live theatre. Isn't this where the production of Educating Rita started for you both? Yeah, it kind of is. In, yeah. Inside that there building there, um, Jess had just come off stage having done a play called Goth Weekend, and I was in the upstairs rehearsal room re-rehearsing The Red Lion that we'd done here originally and were transferring down to London. And so we met after. Yeah, we did. Um, i just done a production of Educating Rita through it, uh, Durham Gala. Yeah. Um, and we just we sat we had a we had a drink and I was he said what have you been up to and I went oh I've been doing educating me and I went oh actually I went you'd make a really good Frank um, and then it kind of just went from there. That was it. It's yeah. entirely her fault. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, but so well then that. then I was I was about to do a tour of art for David Pugh, uh, the producer and. So suggested to him uh, about educating Rita, and um, he said he'd need to hear it. So Jess and I met up with him and Willie Russell's daughter Rachel in a hotel room in Bath, mm -hmm. um, read the play for them, and they decided it might be worth a go. So and they took a chance on it. They, they did, did, bless them. And we're here today, and you're rehearsing for it here before it goes to Cornwall. So how are rehearsals going? Oh, really well. We're at the end of the week, so we've done we've done very well indeed. I think it's all we've made some cuts this time. Um, so I think how, how, how long have we taken off? About 25, 25 yeah, minutes. Yeah, because you know because of all the the COVID restrictions, mm. the the only place that could cater for us was an open air theatre, the Minac in Cornwall, because it's our our sort of third resurrection yeah. of of this. We've we've done two tours of it already, so we've done. A, Done about 180 times. We'll get to do our 200th the week after next. Yeah, 200 yeah. performances. We got That's cut short, lot. obviously, the last time in Blackpool, yeah. didn't we? we did. So we were home in March. So it's, it's just lovely, like rehearsals wise, it's everything kind of slots back into place but we've just been learning the cut, so that's kind of been the challenge this week. But it's actually been quite invigorating. You know, yes. like cuts, yeah. they, they just they force you to play something a little bit yeah. differently. So, so the main difference is there's no interval. Yeah. This mm -hmm. time, it's just uh, it's, it's about ninety minutes straight through, mm -hmm. uh, which makes it a bit more tense, especially since it's just used to and it's very just much continuing Absolutely. on. Yeah. So a lot of people are surprised after having seen the film. Yeah. Then to to well a to learn that originally it was a stage play. We've had a few. A few husbands mansplaining <laughs> to their wives that the play's based on the film. No. Actually, yeah. the other way yeah. around. Because it's just the two of them on stage. So, yeah. obviously, in the film, you get to meet all the other characters, but it's just Frank and Risa. And in Frank's office, and you follow them over an academic year. And they're both starting from the same point. Neither of them have done the Open University before. Frank as a teacher, and Rita as a pupil. Mm. So, uh, they, they suddenly become very by the end incredibly codependent on each other when it's one of those classic things of maybe this relationship shouldn't work on paper because there's a lot of differences but um, Rita's enthusiasm reinvigorates yeah. something that Frank had lost in his teaching so it's great and obviously you didn't get to come to Newcastle uh, on the original tour but there are plans to hopefully at some point Fingers crossed. I mean, as soon as the theatres are open, I'm sure David will absolutely have us in them. I mean, it was, it really was heartbreaking. I've never played my hometown. I've never played, uh, the, you know, the theatre. Yeah. So, yeah, it was. It was really heartbreaking for both of us. Well, for the whole crew, we were really looking forward and finishing in your hometown as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it would have been well, amazing. We, we do feel very beholden to the people who book tickets in advance, mm -hmm. and uh, we feel like we haven't given them the show yet. Mm -hmm. So, I, I hope we do get to at some point. Absolutely. Fingers crossed. And I got cut off because of coronavirus. How does it feel coming out of lockdown and straight into rehearsals for this? I've, I've just been really, really excited. <laughs> and yeah. very, I feel really lucky and really fortunate. I know there's, I've got hundreds of colleagues. I'm sure we all know that, that you know, yeah. the, the, the current state of the industry and the landscape's quite bleak and, and everything like that. So, But I just feel really lucky and really fortunate that I'm back at work. And 
it is an amazing play and I get to work with amazing people so I just feel very very lucky yeah. at the minute and, and it's, so, it's sort of gone back to basics da yeah. David Pugh said I'm a producer I need to produce plays yeah. in order to say this is what I do for a living and, and we're the same and consequently everyone's taking a drop in wages in order to make it happen it's not a, a, a profit making exercise this one it's just there to hopefully offer a, a beacon of hope yeah. to people and encourage other theatres to to try and get get back to some kind of normality and there really has been you know david set the ball rolling and there's slowly and you see things on twitter and facebook and yeah. it has it's kind of i think Starting it's yeah, yeah it is you can see it kind of and you've just got your fingers crossed so yeah Fingers crossed for the yeah, and for, for every performer who's desperate to perform, there's, there's hundreds of people who want to watch yeah. know, and share that experience. That's the that's the, that's the main thing about you know live stuff is that interaction between you and the audience and that it's a shared joint experience. suspension of yeah, disbelief. Yeah. Mm. What do you think the future of theatre will be? any different I, I said the other day you know it, we're very good with a creative industry so if there's a solution to be found we're going to find, find it. it like we're yep. definitely the people to go to if you need to find mm -hmm. a solution for something so um I, we're, I, I mean you see things online I think I mean I'm going to be start oh, I want to do events and stuff I'm going to try and access it like use my garden a little bit more mm -hmm. and but I just miss being around other creative people that's where I'm at at the minute I'm loving being back in a rehearsal room and I've just started going back to writers group so the future I, th I think right now it's a writer's time you know until the theatre's open I'm like in my head I'm going I really hope writers are sitting there and then when this when we come out of this there's going to be some really yeah. amazing new scripts you know and actors we're just we're standing there with that we just got our highlights at the ready, <laughs> the ready rings, you know go. we're yeah. like come on give us the parts give us the scripts because everyone's chomping at the bits to get back to work so let's fingers crossed i think just in this quiet time that the writers have been really really busy and they're going to come out with something fantastic yeah so future of theater could be incredible i think they, i think they said that uh book sale uh new books are going to be booming next year because yeah. so many people were writing during lockdown so it could be plays but as well isn't that fantastic though yeah. because we might find new writers you know new ex and the older writers as well they might have been writing some amazing stuff that they've been meaning to get around to yeah. for a long time you know that is really keep that's what's keeping me going at the minute i think actually is that that hope that there's going to be some really nice parts to get your teeth into yeah. when all of this is over and done with yeah might even be some new actors someone might have Thought Possibly, yeah. that's for me during lockdown. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, I've done loads of reading I don't know, and watching films as well, you know, films and TV and everything. I mean, not much else to do, but yeah. I've been improving my skills. I kind of went back to basics a little bit. And I did an open university course on analysing scripts. And <laughs> I didn't know, but sometimes yeah. it's nice to go back to basics because it reminds you of what you should be doing. I think you can get at risk of being complacent. Yeah, you know, once about life your gets busy, you can start forgetting what you've learned and absolutely. You, you lose sight of I think things. hand in hand with that self isolation is a self exploration. Yeah. And you, uh, you, you have the time to uh, to give it a go. Yeah. Um, could you just remember all the lines when you came back from lockdown? Or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're lucky in that we live together, so we can we can surprise each other. <laughs> like Inspector Clouseau and Cato, we just leap out on each other, giving giving cues for various yeah. scenes to see if we're still up to the up to scratch. But we've done, I mean, like, this show's been in my mind, I mean, goodness, we re I read it when I was 14, I think you were about the same age, weren't mm -hmm. you? Um, so it's, the, the character's certainly been in my head since I was a teenager, but the actual script itself has been in my mind now for four years. Various different versions and various yeah. different cuts, but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know the lines, they're solid. <laughs> They'll never leave me. It must be pretty weird uh, reading it when you're 14 and then we come to the age where you can play the characters. Yeah, especially when you've got Willie Russell in the room. <laughs> oh, you know. yeah. He's both, Such both a bit uh, starstruck, because mm. he's, I mean, he is a proper, proper deserving legend. Um, yeah. And he writes such fantastic female parts. I mean, it really is what he's, it's part of what he's famous for, is writing these amazing female characters. So for any woman playing any of the parts, whether it's Shirley Valentine or Rita or yeah. Mrs. Johnston in, in Blood Brothers, you know, they're, they're the best, aren't they? Yeah. So it's a pleasure. You say this all the time, actually, that lines are really easy to learn when the writing's good. Yeah. So that it, because it all makes sense, sense, and that's what it has to do. You know, when you when you're performing it, there has to. And Willie is fantastic. He writes, he, he writes straight from the heart, and you, you just you, it's very easy to understand, very easy to follow. And even though this is 
set amid the world of academia. He, he, he makes every character and every plot that he writes so accessible to everyone or to anyone who might come yeah. to watch the play. And that, that's a real gift. And making it all inclusive and, and that theatre's not beyond the reach of anyone was uh, was certainly a, you know, a calling card for a lot of people, I think. Absolutely, yeah, it was for me. It was the first working class female voice that yeah. I'd ever heard in a script and it just... Yeah, it, it's definitely one inspired me to continue as an actor. I don't think if I if I hadn't have read Educate and Rita, I may have thought that there was never going to be a place for me. Really? And it, we could, well, you don't hear that many working class voices on yeah, stage, you, you know, don't. you know, regional accents and, and and things. So it's usually a standard RP, you know, especially when you get into the kind of London circuit yeah. and stuff. There there really isn't room for a, a Geordie, you know. So, but or a Liverpoolian or you know Hall or anything, just those sorts of accents. And she was going like, oh right, maybe if if people are writing these plays, then maybe I do have a future in the industry because the rest of the stuff is quite intimidating. Yeah. You know, when you're a young performer, you're like, I don't, I, I can't relate. Can't, can't relate. I don't know that character. I can't yeah. see it through their eyes. And, and stuff. then, but once I found Willie Russell, I remember I did Educate and Meet Her, and then I think I devoured all of his plays. I did mm -hmm. Shirley Valentine, and then I did Blood Brothers, and everybody loves Blood yeah. Brothers. You know, it was my West End go-to every time. I went to London. I always That's went to see Blood see. Brothers. Yeah, because I, I just loved it. I absolutely, and I still do. If it was on, yeah. I'd still go now. Yeah, it's a fantastic play. So you must be um, quite starstruck when, when Willie was in the room. Well, it's quite yeah, a bit of pressure. You know, you'd, you'd think maybe forty years on. He, he, I don't know how many productions he's seen of it, now, but he's he's still as as caring as ever and, and as enthusiastic as ever. And um, well, after. He, he, after the, the, the first night at uh, the Theatre by the Lake in Keswick, he, he just came back and said, thank you for giving me my play back. That must be lovely, yeah. He knew, he knew we were serious about it, and uh, I'm sure everyone is, but it was, it was just lovely, lovely to hear that from the man himself. Well, if, you, if you're only going to make one person happy in the auditorium, <laughs> you'd hope it would be the right yeah. <laughs> So did you change anything about the production when you came back after lockdown, like... Was there any scenes that you have to change? Yeah, we, well, we've had to lose about 25 minutes out of the running time. And as I say, there's, there's no interval this time. And we'll be starting at 7 o'clock rather than half 7 yeah. so that everyone can leave in a little bit of daylight. And we're, we're sort of at the whim of all the measurements that the, the Minac Theatre has to put in yeah. place, uh, including the weather. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's some amazing backdrop. You, you could be anywhere in the Mediterranean. You could really. be, and, and at any time, it looks it looks very Grecian. Yeah, yeah it does. But uh, as you can see by my hair, though, a little bit of mist is um <laughs> is, uh, a bit of frizz. <laughs> It's the humidity. Well, uh, I had <laughs> one, one woman on social media says she's she's booked to see the show twice. Yeah, that's one amazing. To, one to kind of take in the view, and then the next time to come and concentrate on the play. Everyone's going to have to do that. I think even you, so if you catch sight of it, you'll be... Well, yeah, we've uh, heard yeah. you can be upstaged by schools of dolphins. <laughs> so, really? Imagine, yeah, can you imagine trying to, <laughs> trying to compete with them, being all yeah. like cute Doing a few flipperish. tricks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, Somewhere oh. outside the window of a non-specific northern university <laughs> in 1980. <laughs> like, yeah. like them down there. Yeah. Dolphins. Use your imagination, folks. Um, Jess, this isn't your first time playing Rita, as you mentioned. So in 2017, you said that you weren't trying to fill the boots of Julie Wallace, but you were trying to put your own mark on it. How did you do that? Oh, I'm not quite sure how I did it. I just, um, I definitely avoided watching the film. Um, Julie Wallace is a huge influence. She's, um, she's someone that I've really admired. I mean, how can you not? You know, Victoria yeah. Woods and all them, oh, the monologues that you, yeah, and Mrs. Murray and all the monologues that she used to do. They're, them are my favourites, actually. But um, avoid the film completely. I, I caught, it, ooh, I caught a little um, a glimpse on the on the news of a tiny little section, and it, it's like an earworm. It got stuck, and I was like, oh, no, no, no. Um, but I mean, you, you can't fill Julie Walters' shoes. I think that would be foolish, you know. And, yeah. I, and I have to. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an actor. And, you know, might, I hope I, I, maybe I bring something different. I mean, I never saw the original stage production. Um, no. You know, I wasn't born then, so I think that might. I think the stage production itself was very different to the film. Right. You know, and, yeah. and she using comment herself. I think that the character in the film was somewhat softer, wasn't she? Mm. Than the, the the stage production. Um, obviously to reach a more international audience. Yeah. Um, so I hope I've just I've. I've made it my own, and I've said a few times that I've got a 
everyone who knows Rita or who's seen the play or seen the film has got this sisterly relationship with her. Everyone cares about us, you know, she's almost like a relative. So you have to honor that, I think. And yeah, you know, because people do care about us. So I hope that I represent that voice really well. And, and they do warm to her, don't they? Very they, they, much everyone, so. they care about her and you want to take her under her wing because she's quite vulnerable, Rita, as well. She's yeah. sassy and strong. <coughs> But well, she's well, shy she and nervous. Yeah. And Everyone loves that universal theme of a second go yeah. at mm. something. And so, you, yeah, you really root for her, but, but for their relationship as well, because Frank's very lost and on a downward mm. spiral before she reinvigorates his passion for his job. Um, so it's, it's lovely. It's lovely to hold them. You, you really root for the pair of them, I think. And 40 years on, it's still relevant to today, today's society, isn't it? Yeah, sadly, on the negative side, a, yeah. lot of the, a lot of the things he was making points about 40 years ago are still relevant now. But um, the, the, there's still been a lot of uh, lovely, favourable reports from people that are either at university have come to it late on or are going into the open university and saying, yeah, it's still there, still hasn't changed. And I said on Twitter they use it as a hashtag, you know, if someone's yeah. like passed their exam or they've like just finished uni or they're starting you, they're gone, it's always hashtag educating Rita. Yeah. So it's that reference, you know, when you want to start fresh again when you're having a you know, a new go at life or you're learning a new it's skill. Part of it's culture a, now, isn't it? It is, Ooh. but that's it's a it's a it's a thing. Oh yeah. I've done a full educating Rita. Yeah. It, you know, and I think everyone loves a second chance at life, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter where you are in your thirties, your forties, your fifties. To, to retrain to do something yeah. or to just move away and, and have an adventure I, everyone can get behind that that's a universal story yeah. uh-huh. and I think after lockdown a lot of people will be going into doing more courses and stuff and well, I think yeah, so. change the direction they're doing them while they're in lockdown I mean, yeah. honestly the Open University have got free courses at the minute yeah. and loads of people have been online doing them doing an and why not and the thing is that might inspire people so yeah. the story might even be more relevant now than what it was when we finished in March because yeah I'm sure a lot of people are having to find new jobs yeah you know because their jobs are completely gone mm-hmm. so retraining will be an absolute necessity for them but you know one door closing and another one opening it could be very exciting as well yep yeah. um, so is there any similarities between the characters and yourself uh, well, the ages, the ages are quite similar. Um, I don't know. It's you, you, al- you always hope there isn't, and that you're just a brilliant actor, and uh, you're, you're pulling all these things that are completely foreign to you. But uh, there's well, there's there's little bits. I'm I'm not as uh, uh, terrible an alcoholic as Frank, um, but uh, well, I think they, in th- they, they get very enthused about their subject matter, which I suppose actors do, because mm. you, you're pretty vulnerable unless you put the work in. So there's maybe that aspect. But you? Yeah. I, um, I was a late student. I went to uh, university, which I started off in TV and film in my, in my very early 20s, teen, early 20s, uh, until I realised that I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Um, <laughs> I needed to go back to uni to actually study and learn my craft and everything. So I've definitely got that in common. And I've certainly... I, I really empathise with Rita. I understand that 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 struggle, because it isn't just about what you learn in the books, you know, like that. And it, yeah, you've yeah. got to learn that, you know, and you've got to sit the exams and all that. There's social rules yeah. that are different that you've got to learn, and and Rita has to learn them over that academic year. And I can really, I really appreciate how hard that can be, depending on what background you come from. You know, we talk about a lot the, the first time Rita would have stepped on ta- on, on a university campus. And, you know the big impressive yeah. buildings and she said oh my goodness me that sort of feeling of being quite intimidated I know I can understand how that would feel completely you know yeah. Um, so yeah a bit in common yeah a little bit, little in common bit with her. yeah but then that's good because yeah. I can empathize with her and it helps me to, to de- yeah and yeah. deliver the story in a, in a truthful in a truthful way yeah. um, I know you said that you tried to avoid watching the film but were you a fan of the film beforehand yeah, yeah. of course I was yeah so. Yeah, they were a great pair mm. together. And not many people had seen June before it was the first film. Yeah. So, so they hit the square between the eyes, and which is what Rita needs to do. Rita has a new intelligence capture, really. And, uh, and, have, and have done for, for all the audiences who played it. It's just the two of you, you have to get that relationship. 
right. But I, I, I think the film, uh, for people who have seen it, does is a, a few favourites, uh, because then you go back to the, the original and best and see that it's just the two of them. Yeah. But uh, I think it's much more enjoyable, and much more immersive. Yeah. Um, there's a little nod, isn't there, in the in one of the props to the film. Ah, we do, yeah. Uh, Frank's uh, teaching certificate, which is behind him on the wall, we've had, we've had fake signed by Michael Caine. <laughs> 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 it is. It's just a little odd. <laughs> In the spirit of educating me down, if you're a teacher, what would you teach? Uh, well, I, I do. Well, I think I'm not an official teacher. I've done teaching before, but um, I, I, I facilitate and I do poetry and, uh, and drama. Mm. That's quite good. Cricket, because then I'd only get the work of the sun. Oh, it'd be lovely. That would be a dream job, that. But uh, I'm not as entertaining as the people they've got on at the moment. No. So. <laughs> One day. So we're here in the North East, which is home for all of us. Um, what are your favourite places in the North East? Oh, mine's the coast. I mean, I haven't worked really by the coast anyway, but that whole North and Mullen coastline, I just think it's fantastic. And you know, like, yeah, we've got some really nice places over there, you know, like pop-up bars, pop-up yeah. restaurants, and North Shields Fish Key is just lovely. Yeah. Um, it gets in very well past, don't yeah, you, and yeah. everything. And so, yeah, and I, yeah, so it's, I, me, I'm, I'm definitely a, a coastal girl, so Cornwall, I'm really excited about seeing the, uh, that coastline as well, so that's going to be is a dip. Yeah, it is. I've never been that far south before. I think we're so. about we're four miles away from Land's End. Very they can't send us any further. That was getting wet. And is it the same view down the coast? Oh, absolutely. But uh, well, also, I mean, I love the bridges yeah. here. The, I love the river and I love Grey Street. I think it's John Betjeman, the poet, who said it's one of the most beautiful examples of the Georgian Street anywhere. It is very, very handsome. It is good. Uh, I did miss Newcastle actually because yeah. we were we were by the coast for a majority of lockdown, but. Um, when they, they lifted some of the restrictions, I came through to see a friend yeah. uh, who lives just along on, on that one uh, on Walker Road there. But I had a little pop down, uh, I did on the free trade, yeah. and yeah, I just took a quick little picture. I, got, I genuinely missed that that view of the quayside. I do only coffee shop, I, when I'm writing, I do coffee shop pops. Right. So I know where the sun is yeah. <laughs> throughout the day. So I can dot along, and I've, I, I really missed walking about Newcastle. I really, really have. Plus the people as well, oh. and the accent. Uh, it's gorgeous to the air, and, 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 and people, you know, that don't have to know you have the telly or anything, say hello to you in the street. You know, it's, it's very uplifting, I think, very life enhancing. I read somewhere that they, uh, the description also was that we're pathologically friendly, which I think is very True. good. I'm missing my chit chats with the people, you know, the, the people at the news agents yeah. in the supermarket because I've got my mask on. I don't know, I'm a right chatterbox, so like I do. Oh, yeah, you're all right. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm yeah. all right. Oh, so, yeah, I miss all of the interactions with people, but, um, you know, hopefully they'll be back soon as well, because I do miss a bit of a chin with yeah. everyone. Well, I'm really nice to be on. I know this is the second time we're doing the interview, I'm going to be honest, but I said last time about how Stephen stopped when I was on the bar today and asked if I was all right, which was really nice thing doing. He just came back today. Yeah. To do well, it, of course. Of course. Anything does it? And it's, you know, it's before you you asked this. It's, it's nice to be asked, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, people watching they can be inspired to go and see something themselves or put something on themselves. Or even look up the play and get yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Get reading it. I mean, yeah, read Willie Russell's work if you've got a bit of time on your hands. Yeah, because uh, you won't be disappointed. Absolutely not. I'm sure you will love it. Um, so go back to training. You trained at Newcastle College. Do you feel like the stuff that you learned there was useful or uh, well, was the yeah. out there? No, a bit, a bit of both, you know, I mean, um, I, I, I didn't go to the, a, a big drama school or anything like that, um, yeah. and, and Newcastle College certainly did their best with the facilities that they've got available to them, and certainly some of the tutors, I had a fantastic tutor called Debbie Little, who was just phenomenal, yeah. I mean, an amazing actress as well, like, and she didn't give you an easy time. You didn't put the work in, she'd be sure enough That's to tell you. Amazing. Oh, absolutely. She um, she used to give me, she used to give me quite a hard time actually, but I really appreciate it. And, um, and then when I finished this set up, uh, 
I, I set up a theatre company. I used to run the Jazz Cafe up Pink Lane, and I opened a, a, a like a fringe theatre venture upstairs. And I just started doing uh, cabaret shows and, and poultry nights, and I produced a few one man shows. And one -man, and I, for me, it's just I. You you say a lot that the audiences teach you a play, or they the audiences really teach you how to perform. You learn by the last time you learn how you your beats and your rhythm and and how you perform them. And, so that was that was invaluable for me, like setting up your own company, and I made sure that I was performing at least once a month or twice a month. And I started. I mean, half the reason I did poetry was because I just wanted to be on stage. Right. I want to get on stage and I want to perform and I want to write. So I just went and did it, and it's yeah, it's done me massive favors. It really, really has. So the best I, you can get being out there. Absolutely, because in the thing, it, it helps you with your nerves as well. Like my nerves, I would say that you actually a couple of days in yeah. my nerves in auditions used to be so bad. Like when first, especially when I was younger, yeah. half the reason I stopped in my early twenties was because the nerves were getting so bad. Um, but the, but just being in front of, but forcing myself to be in front of an audience and, and then just getting to perform more, my nerves just started to slowly, you know, dissipate until I could just, I could just do it. And then now I don't get half as nervous as yeah. what I used to. Oh no, it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, so for me, just yeah, college and train as much as you can because you've got to know what you're doing. You've got to learn your craft. Yeah. You know, and all them silly games that you play. They, yeah. They've got a meaning because yeah. when you drop a line on stage, suddenly that game that you played six years ago, you go, oh, I need yeah. to do this. And you just get yourself out of it. So, yeah, all of that type of stuff. Well, definitely, for audiences, 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 don't be lazy. Get out and, and do it. Don't wait for someone to ring you because you'll be waiting for yeah. a long time. So, do you both think, do you both still get nervous when you go on stage? Or oh, yeah, yeah, because they're still that like, responsibility. It's, it's, it's lovely, I mean, and, uh, and especially with comedy, you can hear laughter, it's, it's a lovely incentive yeah. all the way through. I do, I admit it, but yes, I do think there's a laugh that we forget early. I'm usually really, 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 really nervous, and I'll, I'll just hear a little sort of, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm okay, I'm working, I'm working, I'm good, I'm good. And so. I, think we're, I think we're the only mammals that go to such extremes to, <laughs> to put the effort on just to get that laugh. <laughs> kind of sets us apart, yeah. which is rather noble. <laughs> I think. Yeah, a lot of effort goes into making people have a have a good night and, and, and well, sets us all. apart. Mm. I think it's the mentality of just before you go on stage, you always going on as a little look to spot someone young. I think that yeah, I'm gonna inspire them. Mm. Do you do anything similar or is it just there in the back of your mind? Uh, I mean I think most of for me, because I did um I worked with a company called Open Class for a while and I mean we would do anything from, you know, the larger theatre type live to community venues sometimes where you've only got like, you know, a, a women's group where there's five of yeah. them. Um, and it's about it doesn't matter whether there's five people there and it doesn't matter if you're, you know, in one of the, the bit you you still do exactly the same performance. Yeah. So yeah, that that's for me and just when you don't you, know, you don't let people down and that everyone is equally as deserving of exactly the same performance as you did the night before. And then you know it, yeah. that that's what I kind of take. But as long as I'm representing the the story and, and the character well. Yeah, just do your job. That's what I enjoy. Does the play get um, different? Does the audience react differently when it's up here and down south? Or? Yeah, very much. I, th I think the further north you go, it's it, the, the acceptance and understanding of Britain is immediate. And, and sometimes a little bit more stilted. In, South, isn't it? It's a little bit more muted. Sti everyone still goes absolutely bizarre at the end, berserk at the end. And you kind of think, well, what, why haven't you been as vocal throughout that? But you know, some some audiences listen, more, but then save it all up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, that is the beauty of touring. It, it, it's different. Each venue is different. That, therefore, it always keeps it on its toes. Yeah, we do have a few of those actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Show. Yeah, and then at the end of it, we got this whole standing ovation. 
situation, they were instantly just like, oh my god, where have you been? Yeah. You've been so quiet. <laughs> yeah, the assurance all the way through. Yes. Yeah, well you kind of yeah. need it sometimes because you're going, oh my goodness, they're not, oh, they're not taking to it. And I'm off stage and I'm doing my costume, she's going, oh, they're not really getting it. And then, no, they were all right. And just, like, all of them, they were, you were, oh, you were loving it. So you can misread them sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but definitely well, it'll, it'll the... Be, it's strange seeing how the, the social distancing for the audience works because sometimes you don't feel encouraged to laugh out loud if there's spaces around. Yeah. It might just be the fact that we're, we're back to the theatre show and everyone just missed us. Yeah, hopefully, I think. Yeah. And what do you think that acting opportunities for piano is opportunities I think it's what I was saying before you've got to kind of make your own look you know we've got two wonderful producing houses well three I think Gala was was producing as well because they started doing Rita and I did Frank Bradford and so we have some producing houses you know but look we're not London and we don't yeah. have that many theatres and we don't we're not littered with film companies and TV companies so but what I do like about being up north is that we have a lot of like just create we have a lot of writers we have a lot of performers we have a lot yeah. of poets we have a lot of you know so everybody is really I think everyone's really proactive in their careers up here you know we really fight and we create things and go well if that opportunity isn't there I'm going to do it There's, and I really like that about North Bay. I mean it's probably all regions isn't it because we don't have the same opportunities all the same for London as London for that You're matter right, yeah. so we're a bit feistier I walked with a girl uh, from from London who came up here to do a show and when we finished the show I asked her about it and she was just like it's a so motivated she was like but not just like politically motivated um, like creatively motivated yeah 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 well like real go getters you know and i th and again that's what i'm really hoping out of lockdown of, I, I feel it in the minute i went to my first writers group for the first time as well um just the other week and it was oh it was brilliant it was not just brilliant seeing people being being creative and really feeling that everyone's raring to go yeah. again and it was like oh this this is making me feel good and i can feel it there's this there's a little there's a thing happening, you know, there's yeah. a movement, it's gonna, yeah. it's coming. So I think it'll get better, actually. I think it, it is, isn't it? Mm. Um, I know you helped out with Berlin's firm when they were filming around Newcastle. I think it's good to give back and help out where you can. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some people get criticised for, you know, and say you should never do a job without being paid for it. But, but sometimes they, they, that's the only opportunity there to, to get something heard or get, give a taste of it at least with the hope to next time it will be fully funded. As long as you're getting out there and doing it and you know, trying to capture people's imagination with whatever story you're telling, that's what it's about. It's, it's storytelling. Yeah. And, and everyone thrives on that throughout history and it will never go away. I do, and I know that they had like a, a premiere and everyone was buzzing it. Yeah. It's just nice to make people yeah. happy. Yeah, exactly. Um, I know that you won, you won the Journal Culture Award the best performance in 2018. I How did. was that? It was amazing. I'd never won an award before, so it was like really exciting, and it's nice to be recognised, you know, by your peers and yeah. your, in, in, in your hometown. But yeah, I did. Um, it, first award. It was fantastic. I, to be, I was up against my best friend as well, though, oh. so that was a bit of a rotter. But um, but we still went out and had a good drink afterwards oh, and good. celebrated. So the shoes out there. Yeah. Well, no. Do you know what our theory is? Is that if you look at all of the great kind of teams of people that come up together right so you've got like your Monty Python is it the Footlights at Cambridge yeah. and people come up together in teams yeah you know like if you, I was saying to you as well that Liverpool Manchester set where there was Julie Walters there was Matthew Kelly there was Pete Postlethwaite Alan Armstrong Good and boy. yeah yeah so all it, you come up together right it's really important that we get behind each other and that you support everybody yeah. in your community I'm so about supporting everyone in the North East right now but come on Let's put out some really good yeah. work. We're going to champion the North East, you know. So yeah, but it's lovely. It's nice to get recognised. Not the be all and end all, you know. But um, of course, it's lovely. Did you have a nice acceptance speech ready? No, you yeah. weren't allowed to give one. Oh. I know, devastating, isn't it? I had loads yeah. of people to thank. I've been rehearsing it for years. Mum, yeah. watching at home. Thank you. <laughs> no, just want to thank everybody for coming. Yeah, no, didn't. They? Yeah, no, none of that. Um, but it was just really, really. Yeah, it was really. It's, it's lovely, isn't it? To yeah. Get Well, there's one in particular, the BC Faulkner Hobbs Award. Yes, that was that was the first one while I was still at uh, 
drama school is something that all the drama schools enter because uh, the BBC uh, radio drama company is like any other rep theatres. They're, they're given a couple of cards a year, equity cards. And uh, Carlton Hobbs was a famous radio actor. I think it was the first Sherlock Holmes on radio, and he he left this bursary for a for a boy and a girl. I was I was lucky enough to win that. And so my, my first job was uh, 54 plays in seven months. Crazy. You know, we talk about. Uh, the, uh, a national theatre, you know, the, the BBC radio drama is one of the biggest theatre producing houses that there is, and uh, I'm very special, you, you get very close to the writer in that, because no two listeners are going to share exactly the same vision of yeah. when the play is set and what you look like, so it's like the next best thing to read in a book, and it makes you very aware that without that writer, you wouldn't be there, mm -hmm. so never forget, it's not you. It's them. You're, you're there to interpret. I think that's why. That, I mean, I think that's why we're so good. Look, like I was 52 plays, 54, 54 yeah. plays, and to be performing them as well, like that experience is, yeah. is fantastic, mm. isn't it? What you have to do vocally as well. Like we've been talking about that about radio, mm. from that co concentrating completely on your voice is just yeah, and, and amazing. Uh, various pe friends of mine have told me they've listened to something, not realizing I was in it. Right. And said, oh, you were that person. Oh, I, I thought they were sort of much smaller, older, slightly dumpy. Funny, isn't it? Because you, you do sort yeah. of imagine you have a totally yeah. different picture. Do you know what? Those radio plays are fantastic, though, because obviously, you know, you can get limited on what we see up here. You know, you yeah. don't see like Chekhov, or you don't see the classic. You're just because it's very much dependent on what is performing in the area, you know? But the radio plays are fantastic. If oh, you want to yeah. hear how something is performed yeah. without having to pay the price of going to one of the bigger theatres, you know, it's going to yeah. be 60 quid or It's, the, it's the next best so. thing to read in a book and it's mm. limitless in its scope for imagination. It's, it's, it's up to you and, and, the, and the writer, so it's lovely. Do you still do any radio plays now? Yeah, I try to. I've got, I've got a, a series coming out next month called uh, Prostrate about... Uh, People dealing, uh, fellas, of course, dealing with prostate cancer, and it sort of takes you. The, the, the writer uh, went through it himself, and he's put out. It's it's a sort of guide, stroke comedy drama. Um, it's an important uh, topic. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, definitely. And it's, uh, it's I'm looking forward to the reaction to it. And Jesse, you had a role in Curry, didn't you? I did. How was that? It was yeah. It was only a small role. Um, it was really nice. It's uh, yeah. It was. It was the lovely crew, lovely cast. Everyone was amazing. It's, it's obviously it's difficult when you're just a small part and you're just popping in for the day, you know. Yeah. Um, but they couldn't have been more supportive. It's Corey in it. Yeah. Who's not going to want to so do awesome. a little bit on Coronation Street? You know, yeah. it's like a it's a British institution. Yeah, so, so yeah, that was lovely. But you know, again, strangely, that director um, Ian Bevers. I think I worked with in my early twenties and. And seeing him, I haven't spoken to him in years, and you know, ten years later. So, industry's a funny thing. Did he say that you, you got better, or did he have any nice comments? No, we just, you know, I didn't even have to. I didn't get a casting for it or anything. Um, it just went through me. Actually, he said oh, he wants really? you to come in, and I was like, oh, oh, that's, nice. oh, that's, oh, that's fantastic. Great. I, it's just strange because sometimes you think you've been forgotten about, but actually. But Sometimes the directors just wait for uh, the, the right part, yeah, yeah. and then they go, "Oh, actually, oh yeah, get, get Jesse." But it, would you, it was really lovely to see him. I mean, a nice catch up, and and as it, honestly, Corey is that they're, they're such a lovely team. Yeah, they, yeah, they really look they're after you, family. and yeah, and just yeah, really nice, really friendly, and really welcoming. Because again, as a visitor, sometimes it can be nerve wracking because they yeah. are a family, you know. You're some distant visit, cousin, yeah, yeah who's <laughs> came in, and like, oh, who are you? Yeah. But they weren't like that at all, actually. They were and not to make you feel old, but I think people know you from different things, like Wilder Hard Drop the Dead Donkey and stuff. But I know you're Seaside Banks. Would you like to return to that role? Yes, I'd love to. I mean, it, just because the, you know it's gone off the, the ITV platform, there's, there's other places that they could. There's hundreds now. Uh, Peter Robinson's still writing the books, yeah. so uh, the, there's plenty of material there. Maybe we, maybe we could relocate him up here and then I wouldn't have to travel so far. That would be nice, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> lovely. Yeah. So just to finish off, what was your career highlight apart from being interviewed by me? Oh, well, uh, there is nothing else. <laughs> can't be topped. That's it. Um, no, I think, yeah, it's it. I, well, of course, it's got to be this one, really, hasn't it? I 
mean, I've done it's, lots it's of... It's usually the job you do in at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but because I've got such a long relationship, I've dreamt about playing this. I'm, from the second I read it, I dreamt about playing this part. Yeah. Uh, in fact, at one point, I was getting worried that I was getting too old to play when the, when the no, garden no, came. No, no, you're not, Jess. Good, thank you. Um, That's right, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this one, I don't... I, I, yeah, definitely this one. Yeah. I don't choose anything. Well, thanks for taking time out of the rehearsal again. To oh, no, it's our pleasure. pleasure. Thanks for asking us. Thank you.